Okay, hold it in. Rolling. More. Okay. I want to, uh, let's start by talking about 1937. Tell me a little bit about what you were doing in 1937, how your life was then. Well, I would, I would say that in 1937, uh, as far as I was concerned, it was sort of the beginning of, of a very interesting period. Uh, having been through the Depression myself and uh, knowing, uh, knowing how difficult it was, although it was never uh, the way so many people were suffering, uh, I had uh, been hired by Life magazine when it started. So uh, I, it was quite relatively easy, the easiest period uh, in my life uh, so far. And I, uh, I was in San Francisco, and uh, the, uh, when uh, life started out, they asked me to, uh, to be uh, a, a staff photographer, which uh, I, nobody realized how uh, glorious or important it was. It was, uh, but I was excited and very, very happy about, about the uh, opportunity because it, uh, it meant uh, doing something that. Um, had never exactly been done before in the way of journalistic photography. Uh, it was actually the, the epitome of what I would want to do. And looking back on it, now it, it, it was still a, a great period because uh, uh, the, with, the, with the people that I was working with and the acceptance of the magazine, I could go anywhere and, and be reasonably welcome. But. Uh, the, uh, the the main thing that that I, I I know you're interested in is the fact that uh, uh, the 37s were not uh, a glorious time. We were just uh, for many people. We were just emerging from from uh, and slowly from a very uh, very tough time. And so when uh, I uh, went out with. Uh, uh, um, as not on his assignment, but I went out with Dorothea Lang, who was a very famous photographer and her uh, professor husband, and uh, uh, saw the conditions under which the uh, uh, the migratory laborers uh, were working. Uh, I, I was uh, I was surprised and shocked because even as a Californian, I uh, I, I wasn't. I wasn't aware of that aspect of of how uh, how close to the to the margin everybody was, and when it came at this time, it was a very rainy year, and uh, these people weren't uh, close to the margin; they were over the margin with the uh, with the floods and and all these circumstances. Um, I wonder if you can just describe that for me a little more in, in detail that. The first time you went down with Lang, um, where did you go? Well, the, it's the, at very the thing that took me down there at first was uh, the actual news happenings of uh, lettuce strikes, when it was uh, quite uh, uh, for for me at least quite a, a violent experience. I mean, with the uh, uh, hired uh, well, you can call them strike breakers or goons as they were referred to, who uh, were armed with uh, pickaxes to uh, uh, either beat or threaten to beat these uh, workers into into accepting uh, non-living wages, and uh, uh, the, not only that, but I was uh, quite shocked to see that uh, that our California police highway patrol was used. Uh, as strike breakers as well, and uh, with uh, large amounts of, of tear gas to subdue uh, uh, the, and they weren't riots, but at least uh, they intimidated the the, uh, uh, the strikers. And uh, I was uh, I, I expected a certain amount of of uh, Difficulty for uh, I was a young man, but uh, but fairly strong. 
But uh, Dorothea Lange was a young, uh, was a not so young, uh, and small, and uh, somewhat uh, handicapped, we call it nowadays, from early uh, uh, polio. And the way she stood up to these very burly uh, deputy sheriffs, and uh, as they were sworn in, so they, they did this all under the auspices of legality. But uh, uh, the way she stood up to them just, just amazed me, and I, I remember that one of the, my greatest memories is this little, little woman standing up to, to the, the police. But uh, I, I realized that, I, that what I, it, it was a great story, I thought. Uh, and uh, so I, I asked Life magazine uh, uh, if they wouldn't like to do a, a story on on, uh, on these migratory laborers. We call them migratory laborers. Uh, the, the word term Oki had, was, uh, was used um, um, d d disparagingly about them. And uh, we, we, we just and particularly to when we refer to them uh, themselves, we, we just use the term migratory laborers. And uh, when when they were, um, um, I sort of lost my train of That's thought. That's okay. That's okay. You were starting to um, tell, talk to me a little bit about what seeing their living conditions and oh, seeing the story yeah. inspired you to do. Well, the 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 fact that it it was. Uh, that uh, the weather was so so really bad uh, c uh, compounded their problems. Uh, in the first place, they came out there uh, uh, sort of lured by uh, the the uh, uh, flyers that were sent out, telling of sunny California and wonderful jobs uh, um, that that were waiting for them. And when they actually uh, crossed the border, they found that they were in a place that had no jobs and was beginning to be partially underwater, no work of any kind. So uh, th this was a, a, a terribly uh, discouraging situation. Yeah, tell me a little bit about who these people were. And, and well, they were, uh, we call them as, uh, now Okies. And they did come from Oklahoma, but they came from Arkansas and maybe northern Texas, wherever they'd been uh, uh, dispossessed by uh, circumstances, that is, the, the Dust Bowl. Actually, it, we also referred to it as the Dust Bowl. Uh, but it wasn't the Dust Bowl alone. It was the fact that uh, these people were mostly small, independent farmers. Some of them were sharecroppers, but uh, most of them had their own small farms, uh, and uh, when they couldn't make any, any uh, living off of it, uh, they, the banks foreclosed and they, they just didn't have any place anymore. But with the uh, attraction, uh, allurement of, of wonderful jobs in California, they, they came out ex expecting to, confidently uh, to, to find work. It wasn't that they were uh, just wandering. They, they, and they they had the expectation which uh, was that of a, of jobs were 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 there, and uh, this was rather unfair, but it it did bring the prices down for what labor there was because people would would work for anything. Just it, uh, uh, there were no signs of we'll work for food because there was no use. There was just no no work, and uh, I wanted to, so I wanted to do a story. It, but this was not a story uh, such as uh, you now see in Somali, and the, because it, it, these people were all relatively healthy. They were hungry, they weren't starving. And, uh, uh, but they were uh, on the borderline of, of uh, all the time, and uh, so, uh, uh, when I suggested to the editors in life that we ought to do a story, uh, they, uh, they, uh, I, I think I probably sent a picture or two to give them an idea. And of course, it, it was very discouraging. These weren't happy people, and uh, life was not interested in uh, 
in doing a story on on of this type at that time as uh, when I when I sent the things and asked them they said uh, well uh, you know life makes its uh, its street sales comes from pretty girls on the cover and he said nobody wants to look at at tired frightened uh, Americans so uh, uh, th then I uh, I went to Fortune magazine, which is a sister publication of Life, but it was at that time called uh, the Red Corner of of Time Inc. And they were a lot more sympathetic, and uh, so the uh, the editors uh, were delighted with the idea of of uh, of doing a story. I should say that uh, first that. Uh, I I I was wanted to do a story by myself, as I usually operated, but when I when I saw that they didn't want a story. No, I'm going to interrupt. We're just rolling out. It's a good oh. Minute break for yeah, is it is it all right? Is it, oh, it's terrific. Uh, this is a ten minute roll. Okay. So we talked for ten minutes. Okay, you were. Uh, why, why don't you tell me what you did after uh, life turned the story down and, and fortune altered well, it, and you decided? Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll say, tell the sequence was that life turned it down as a story for me. Uh, so I decided. Well, um, I had seen a, a book that Margaret Bourquoit, who was also a life photographer, uh, and I thought if, if if she can do a book. Uh, they can't complain about my doing a book to, on my own. So uh, her, she had worked with um, an a author, uh, Erskine uh, Caldwell, uh, and uh, so I thought, I, well, I have to get somebody, uh, uh, another author, similar ability, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, work to collaborate with me. So, being in San Francisco, I, I, I thought of John Steinbeck, who had, he had also done a, a book called, uh, on Indubious Battle on on uh, agricultural problems, and it was very, seemed very sympathetic. So I, uh, I picked up the phone and called him and asked him, uh, would you be interested in in doing a photographic book? On migratory labor, and he he was very willing to do it. Asked me to come down and uh, and uh, talk to to him and to his wife about the project. And uh, so I drove down to uh, Los Gatos, which is south of San Francisco, and we uh, had lunch there and uh, uh, leisurely talk about it. It wasn't it wasn't a, a big Problem. I mean, just a way of how we could work it out. He was uh, he was editing, I think, the, the Grapes of Wrath. So he during the week he didn't have any time, and and since I worked for Life, I I, I didn't have any time either. But I felt that the the weekends were legitimately uh, mine to do as I chose. So we um, decided to go down every weekend and and. Uh, Start interviewing the um, the uh, various people who were uh, in in not so much in organized camps or groups, but who were uh, scattered along the roadside, uh, living some of them in 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 the car itself or in ragged tents of stretches of canvas uh, uh, on on a uh, on, even on a, the wet soil or grass. Uh, at any rate, uh, it, it gave us this way. We could we could move, we didn't have to be too much disturbed. I mean, we worked with individual families. Tell me a little bit about how how you would do this on the weekends. You had... Okay, describe that for me a little bit, how you went Well, uh, as, as I said, we would go down on the weekend, which meant that uh, I, since I lived in, in San Francisco, I'd go down to the nearest Safeway and uh, 
fill up my station wagon with all the cheapest cuts of meat and uh, the uh, bulk uh, things that were filling but not expensive, and uh, 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 day-old bread and and uh, the such things as uh, uh, old wilt wilted vegetables that uh, the market probably couldn't sell anyway, and so uh, they were uh, at a bargain and made a very healthy uh, sort of a mix mixture anyway. And uh, we, the purpose for these things were not in any way a bribe or a gift. Uh, these were a, a method that, that we felt that could uh, sort of not, not just show, show our interest in them, but we, we would uh, ask them sort of to, to cook it for us and make, make, make it look as if that uh, they were doing us a favor. And these were very proud people. These were, that's one thing that I can't overemphasize. Uh, these were independent, very, I would say, religious, God-fearing people who, uh, who uh, weren't looking for any charity. And of course, there was no, there was no such thing as welfare or relief. Or there was statewide relief, but uh, they found out that they weren't eligible because they hadn't lived any place uh, in California for a year, which I think was a necessity. But at any rate, they weren't looking for, they were looking for jobs. And uh, by, the, by our coming there and, and trying to become part of, uh, of the family when we interview, they could, they could accept us. We never, I never found any semblance of uh, Resentment is why I, I, I was poking a camera in their face and and taking their pictures. Um, of course, I I really sort of followed behind Steinbeck. He interviewed the people. He talked to them, and I, I just happened to be there taking pictures. And uh, they they accepted this with never never a question as far as as, as I could see. And I think the pictures sort of show the fact that uh, these uh, these people, I w don't want to say they were relaxed, but uh, at least uh, they, they were not posing. They were just being themselves. And uh, of course, uh, they're sad pictures in, in many ways. Um, uh, my wife, uh, it says, oh, they're lovely pictures. But I don't want to have any of them up in my room because they they are so discouraged. I I always felt that these people were at the, had reached the point of that they were were truly uh, had been life had just beaten them down, uh, and uh, they accepted whatever. Uh, uh, demands, for example, that I would make it with taking pictures without any question. Tell me a little bit about how you felt during all this time about what you were seeing. Well, it, it was a, it was a great education for me. Uh, I, I I lived had always lived in rural sort of farm communities. Would my family had been ranchers and. Uh, and I realized that we didn't have much uh, understanding or sympathy for for these people people who actually uh, came to California and were a part of the uh, the whole system of California agricultural wealth. I mean, the the, the term migratory labor is very apt because they were Mexicans originally. Uh, and uh, they they would come up either from Mexico or, or from uh, Imperial Valley and have a, a have a a, a a regular path that they would go every year, migrating if you want to call it that, up to to finishing up uh, with the apples up in Washington State. I mean through through uh, oranges through the lettuce, the oranges, uh, the and uh, uh, the various uh, what they call stoop 
crops because they had to stoop to, to pick them or cultivate them, and then ending with the, with the fr fruit in, in up in the Yakima Valley. So, uh, and then they would come back and prepare, wait to, to, the, to the cycle to, to start all over again the next year. But uh, all this had changed with these uh, uh, people, these Americans, uh, Anglos, or call them whatever you want, uh, who came out from Oklahoma because uh, they were not looking for um, a pattern job. They were looking for a job, anything, a permanent job, if possible, because uh, at that time uh, they, they assumed that nobody was ever going to go back to the Dust Bowl. And uh, so th they, they were quite a different, in, in quite different circumstances. And posed a different, a very different problem for the state, I think. Well, the state wasn't at all pre pre prepared for for them or this problem. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the the um, the people who had benefited most from uh, the migratory laborers themselves uh, were very uh, resentful of of the fact that uh, that. Uh, the the, the uh, here were people who were sort of really looking for permanence. Uh, it, it was much easier to deal with people who were here today and gone tomorrow, and you didn't have any responsibility for them, um, and who were in a position where they couldn't really demand any, anything in the way of uh, of uh, consideration or, or wages or health or sanit even san elementary sanitation, the, the farmers just felt no responsibility uh, for, for them at all. And uh, uh, one of the things that, uh, that Dorothea Lang and her husband uh, had, had done so well was the beginning of, of uh, understanding of the situation on, on the part of the government. Uh, because uh, uh, the government with the farm resettlement or whatever. Hold on a minute. We're, we're out another camera roll. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. But I want to pick we're up just, with that story. Uh, uh, this is really wonderful. Okay. okay. Do you need to stretch it out? Sure, I will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Mark Walker. <coughs> we were talking before about um, the, the, the migrants, the, the, the the Okies and people who came in posed kind of a different problem for the state and really um, brought up this problem of responsibility and who was going to be responsible. I wonder if you can talk to me some more about that. Well, the, uh, uh, the, the farmers in California, uh, I, they, I don't know whether this was a concerted attempt or whether they actually realized what the situation was. But they didn't want any responsibility for these people. And, uh, um, oh, I was starting to tell you about how the uh, uh, farm resettlement uh, uh, was trying to make American people aware of the problem. And uh, uh, the photographers such as, uh, as uh, Dorothea Lang and Carl Maidans and uh, uh, others uh, really uh, helped. Uh, it was a form of propaganda, r rather, maybe a negative propaganda, but it helped to, to make uh, Americans of that generation, at least, somewhat aware of, uh, of the problem. And in, in this they served, a, I think, an important um, position. And of course, when, uh, when ultimately, when Steinbeck wrote *The Grapes of Wrath*, it uh, it was a, a very uh, seminal sort of uh, um, uh, beginning of the understanding of uh, of the problem, and, and therefore uh, was extremely important to the American people. The actually, I don't think that the 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 people that we photographed really benefited very much. But uh, 
the, the awareness of, of the American people has, uh, has improved a, a great deal. And uh, uh, I, I think that, uh, that the, the Steinbeck's the book, The Grapes of Wrath, played a, and the movie played a very great part in this. Of course, um, this was the, 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 the use of the book in the movie was very important because I run across lots of people who haven't read The Grapes of Wrath, but they've seen The Grapes of Wrath. And uh, well, fortunately, since uh, 20th Century Fox used uh, some of my, my pictures as, uh, well, giving some information for casting. I don't know what Im how important it was, but some of the people that ended up in the movies were actually uh, dead ringers for, for uh, uh, the, the, the people that Steinbeck and I photographed and, and talked with. So uh, uh, I think that the, uh, the modern generation is at least a little aware of, of what things were like, which was not the case in 1937. Yeah, I was going to say it was really that these the reality of these people's hard times kind of became art, and there was this yeah. awakening. That's right, uh, and it, but uh, uh, the uh, it, it was very slow. It didn't, and in, in the in the thir in the thirty sevens, uh, uh, it, it 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 wasn't true. Uh, I I I personally uh, didn't. Uh, I didn't aware that how how impre impressed I was until uh, retroactively looking back, I I realized that it it made me uh, a lot a lot more sympathetic and understanding for for these people. I wonder. I want to take you back a little bit and and ask you to um, to describe for me again the living conditions of these people. What what you saw when you and Steinbeck went down there? How were they living? What did it look like? Well, the worst, uh, they weren't uh, sleeping on, without any covering, but they were sleeping with a just ragged uh, piece of, uh, of canvas or cloth uh, to, to actually break the rain. It was, they were wet and, and the, the grass or the dirt was wet. Some of them, uh, uh, would uh, build their tents or raise their tents if they had any underneath the concrete roadway culverts, which meant that they had uh, a, a perfect protection from overhead rain. But uh, when the streams began to, to build up, uh, it, was, it had its own dangers. Of course, that they would have to move. I don't think anybody was washed out by the rains, but but uh, then they had uh, no no steady uh, form of of, uh, of obtaining food. There was they they had no money to buy food, and there were no stores for them to buy food, and no no provision for to to provide. Actually. Uh, the, the, the American communities were individually uh, charitable people, but uh, uh, this was just overwhelming, and I, they rather ignored uh, the. Uh, there were individual people who would try to do something, but it was a little bit too big for, for uh, to undertake as a, as personal charity. I mean, I'm sure the churches did uh, uh, did what they could. And, and individuals did what they could, uh, but uh, there was in general, I think, the tendency to ignore the whole situation, just to sweep it under the rug so that uh, um, you didn't think about it. Describe what it looked like when you were down there in the spring during the, the floods. What, what did you see then? Well, uh, of course, uh, the uh, Steinbeck did tell the story of how some of the families were, were living in 24 families in a 
to a boxcar, which was provided by by the uh, individual farmers in this particular case. Uh, but and then watch the the rain and the floods come up inch by inch until... Why, why don't you tell me that story as you saw it? Because you were there. You, yeah. you told me before you'd gone yes. there. Why don't, why don't you tell me what it looked like to you when you were there? Well, uh, these box cars had become uh, just inundated so that the, the water was maybe a foot or so in, in had over overrun the floor of it, and the, uh, the, the washing was hanging out to dry over just not roaring fields of water, but just gently running fields of water. The, uh, it wasn't the kind of flood where it, it washed out things. It just was water permeated every place. And uh, of, of course, the uh, uh, when it became sort of general, there was not so much place for these people to move to. I mean, they uh, they uh, they'd always moved to higher ground, and uh, but uh, all of them were sort of road bound in the sense that they they had to everybody had to have some form of transportation because uh, it wasn't there was no public transportation that they wanted to go any place in search of a job, they had to uh, have uh, a broken down uh, jalopy, they called it, with it. People uh, kept running some way or other with bailing wire or rags or, uh, to keep, keep the gasoline, which was, they would buy by the gallon. Um, but it, it was very important to them to have this. Uh, they, they, but they were sad-looking vehicles. Um, so um, they they more or less... Um, uh, Talk to me a little bit about, um, about what you felt. You would be leaving your home well, in the Bay Area. And well, that, that, that was a difficult thing. I'm sure for Steinbeck, and certainly it was for me, uh, the sense that we would uh, uh, we would go down the night before to uh, to be there in in the uh, uh, in the early morning to start working on Saturday, and uh, uh, naturally we stayed in a motels weren't luxurious as they can be now they were just the cheapest form of a place to sleep but they were warm and relatively comfortable and uh, they all had. Uh, uh, coffee shops where we could get nice hot breakfast, and so we would we we would uh, early in the morning uh, have our breakfast there, and coming out of a warm situation, uh, start working with people who had who were shivering, who had nothing, no food, and it uh, it it was uh, it, it was a sort of shameful situation for us because you couldn't, I mean, if we'd been uh, hungry too, uh, and I think we kind of felt we should be hungry uh, in order to really have a great empathy with, with these people. But naturally, I mean, life does go on. And uh, so uh, we... Uh, we made a breakfast? All right. Yeah, good. Okay, it's another 10-minute pause. Oh, really? Are you all already... So fast. Go already, uh... Yeah. Um, we were just talking in the break about uh, the kind of questions that seeing these poor people raised about our economic system yeah. in the country. Do you want to tell me a little bit? Well, uh, I, 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 nobody talked politics to them. Nobody talked about the government. They didn't feel that the... They didn't express any feeling that they were entitled to anything. Uh, they sort of thought the way I felt that it. Uh, I mean, I, I, they themselves felt. I didn't feel it, but they thought this is just an act of God that has uh, uh, put them in this position, and and they weren't uh, really uh, about to feel that they 
any special, anything was owed them at all. Um, they, uh, they did feel a, a little resentment uh, about uh, that they were some attempt to mislead them as to working conditions and uh, uh, was made on the part of, of somebody, and that was the growers. And uh, th this was really shameful. But uh, in, in general, uh, uh, perhaps I should explain that um, in the th in the th in thirty seven, by about that time, uh, and all, well earlier, of course, it developed, but it, it was fairly strong, feeling that uh, there was something missing, something wrong, with the system that allowed this sort of thing uh, just to be accepted, and a, a, a lot of. Uh, talk about Steinbeck being a communist and whatnot, uh, and, and the, the sort of agitation against Steinbeck, even in, in his own home uh, town, uh, as being a communist, uh, I felt was very unfair. I don't know whether he was a communist, and frankly, I didn't care whether he was a communist, but he had so much sympathy for the underdog uh, in, in the system, that uh, uh, he, like so many intellectuals, well, I, I would kind of would like to say thinking people, uh, felt uh, th this shouldn't be. And uh, uh, so uh, he, he, he was, um, he, he didn't talk politics to me at all. Well, naturally, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't go and be with these people without talking a little bit and being uh, not just shocked, but s sympathetic. That was the main thing. I mean, uh, it was not the kind of thing that you were shocked about because you sort of accepted that this existed. There was no use being shocked about it. But you uh, uh, couldn't help but feel that uh, s somehow or other, fundamentally, this was wrong, particularly in a country as rich as America was at the time. Yeah. Describe for me a little bit more uh, about how the migrants were treated by local residents or state officials or the growers themselves. What kind of um, treatment did they receive? What well, in general, uh, I felt that the, uh, the, the local people, farmers and, and uh, particularly the associated, the individual farmers are one thing, but when they grew into associated farmers, um, would have been very happy if they could have ignored it and pretended that they didn't exist. But since they did exist, um, they, they, they seem to have a great deal of resentment uh, against these people moving in. Uh, uh, and just the fact that, that they did exist. I mean, it wasn't, um, they resented them individually. It was just the fact that uh, why should they uh, sort of uh, uh, destroy the relatively smooth uh, pattern of uh, California life uh, by, by just being there asking for a job or hoping for a job. And uh, uh, they, they were not, uh, uh, they were not terribly um, at all aggressive about it, uh, but they they were really rather pathetic in their uh, hoping for uh, for some sort of, uh, of of work. Did you ever hear of or, or see of residents or farmers or growers being aggressive in trying to move these people along? Or? No, uh, there was a, there was a certain amount of, of strike activity which uh, in those days was not at all organized uh, as it became later by Chavez or people like that. Uh, it was all sort of more or less spontaneous. Uh, when people, uh, uh, for example, when the price per box went down beyond, beyond any reason where um, it, it, was, it was impossible, no matter how hard you worked, uh, to earn enough to buy any food, 
or any appreciable amount of food, uh, uh, there, there were uh, some uh, strikes, uh, sort of spontaneous strikes in the Salinas area. And that's where I first ran across it, where, and the, where, where the, the uh, associated farmers and the, the uh, uh, highway patrols and deputy sheriffs and uh, took th they were the ones who took the aggressive actions. The, the, I, I don't wish to believe uh, or paint uh, these people as lovely white. I, I don't know, but I, I mean, I, I know that they all were uh, unhappy and uh, in in not being able to work, and uh, 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 perhaps I idealized him to a certain degree, because I, I certainly became very sympathetic with with their wish for for a better life at, at, uh, at by working for it, not at anybody else's expense. Yeah. Yeah. I want to um, shift gears a little bit and talk about one of your later next assignments for life you went up oh. to the uh well, well, oh, well before we finish okay. about uh, uh, about uh, 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 let me tell about uh, 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 Rosa Sharon okay please is that all right sure that's fine because she this is a, a one picture that uh, i to me represented it was a very sympathetic and uh, i knew photographically a a, 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 a very well, it expressed a certain mood and situation mm -hmm. uh, of a, a, a young woman who was uh, uh, nursing a, a baby. And I thought it was a, a very sort of Madonna-like uh, um, situation with a, a part of, I mean, a hand of the husband in the background. And so this happened to be kind of a favorite picture of mine. and. So when Steinbeck used the story of this woman uh, as a, in the last few pages of of the book, uh, he uh, he changed it to her giving uh, her breast to the uh, dying man, and uh, I was un unhappy because one it hadn't happened, and and two it 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 was not terribly fitting at that, at that time, in 1937, uh, American people were extremely conventional, not the way we are today. And uh, it was, I thought it was put in uh, to, to really sh sort of shock and titillate the, the readers. And I, when I expressed that opinion to Steinbeck, he was very resentful. So, uh, at any rate, you, it may not have any importance, uh, but uh, I, I kind of like to put it in. Okay. Um, we, well, I'm glad you shared that story. At, uh, right around the time, actually, The Grapes of Wrath was coming out, you yes. were given an assignment by life to go up to the San Francisco Fair. Uh, yes, well, well could... that was a quite a different situation. I mean, this was all uh, very lighthearted, and while it did have a, uh, the fair did have a certain amount of seriousness, uh, in the, it, it it had some artists such as Diego Rivera and Covarrubias, uh, who uh, painted murals, and uh, uh, it, it, so culturally it was quite uh, interesting. But it uh, it didn't seem to have a great s significance in the uh, uh, in the Americas. Development. The, uh, it was all, I thought, a g amusement park uh, type of uh, of celebration. The, uh, I don't know. Why did Why did Life send you there to cover it? Well, Life was all in favor of selling magazines, and the, the story that uh, that they were particularly interested in in was the one on the. Uh, Sally Rand's uh, uh, nude ranch, where uh, the um, the girls uh, in, in in just about as naked as they could get in those days, with not not much more than a holster around their waist, 
uh, were one of their occupations was uh, 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 throwing horseshoes uh, to show a very bucolic situation. And I remember it so well because. Mm -hmm. Oh, right there, right there. okay. I get to pick up the story right when we stick in the new rag. <laughs> and there's a marker. So, finish telling me your story. Well, to, to finish the, the story, at any rate, I, I was photographing uh, these girls uh, uh, playing horseshoes, and uh, uh, the main thing that uh, that I was very interested in. It was a little boy who was right beside me, and he was talking to his mother, and he, and uh, he said, saying, Ma, those girls can't play horseshoes for anything, <laughs> as if that, that was uh, why the people came to... It, it was, uh, at that time, uh, that kind of a show was quite... Uh, there was not all the kind of uh, exposure that their people kind of take for granted nowadays thanks to television and a few other things. Okay, so let's do it. This is more of that So, uh, if, if you would, can you, can you talk to me a little bit about what you were aware of about the war at this time, say in 39? Well, in California, of course, uh, uh, or in the West, we were uh, aware that there was a lot of uh, sort of preparation for war. Uh, for example, I did a story uh, for Fortune on, on when they were developing the, uh, the first, what they call, fly, flying fortress up in, uh, in Seattle. And uh, uh, the, in general, uh, a lot of preparation and a lot of, of effort and money was being spent in, by, by 47 for uh, pr what we call preparedness, or uh, it wasn't for war, but we uh, obviously people were worried about uh, about the the possibilities. And uh, uh, in the, I, ha I happened to be uh, uh, driving with my son um, over a bridge in uh, in uh, in Washington when the news came that uh, that Hitler had invaded. Uh, uh, Poland, and my son, who was nine years old at the time, uh, said, well, Dad, uh, if that's the way the world is, uh, it's, it's a hell of a world to bring children into. And, and I agreed with him. And of course, I've agreed many times with, uh, with, uh, uh, with children who, who feel that uh, uh, the, the older people can't uh, adjust their lives so that we can live in in peace and and, and uh, the only way that the, uh, the economies develop is when they can count on either defense spending or or uh, or war spending as we did uh, later on uh, so uh, well we're, we're still facing that now of uh, the hangover from uh, our, our prosperity here in the West was it was built on defense spending, and and we're feeling the the lack of it now. Yeah. When when your son said that, were you beginning to feel afraid about what was going on overseas? Were you afraid? No, I I, I I I mean I think it was such a shocking event when the, I, I I don't know how many people remember about 1939 when they went in, but it was totally unexpected. I mean. We, we'd sort of lulled ourselves into the belief that everything was going to be all right. And it was a shock that here what we were facing. We weren't facing war actually ourselves, but it was the beginning of, of, of war. And uh, the, uh, of course, when war actually came, uh, I, I went into the Navy uh, and was lucky enough to be able to still continue to do stories with the with a photographer, under a photographer, uh, who commissioned, who got, he himself was commissioned, and then commissioned five uh, officers uh, to photograph uh, the Navy at war. And was there, you were living in California all during these years, was there a little bit more awareness or 
of what was going on in Japan or any fear? Of oh, there was, uh, there was a really, uh, uh, the Japanese, I mean, the uh, California or the West has been very uh, racist anyway, beginning with people like William Randolph Hearst, who, uh, uh, who was my, my wife's, my, pardon me, my mother's uh, uh, empl employee. She was an editor in, of, a, of a woman's section of a Hearst paper. And Hearst uh, uh, was talking all the time about the yellow peril and how Japan was uh, uh, such a danger to, to, to America. And so uh, the, the, the farmers were aware in some ways of, in a, in a resentful way of the fact that the Japanese would come and get a small piece of otherwise wasteland and turn it into a truly productive uh, uh, situation. And, uh, uh, and the, the farmers were, I don't know whether I should say envious, but they were resentful of the Japanese ability to do that. And they criticized it largely on the basis, well, they said the, the, they worked long hours, the, the wife works, the children work, every, and of course that, that happens to be a, a, a rather Japanese uh, convention of everybody turning to and working, and it was true. So when war came, uh, California was quite happy to, uh, to confiscate the land and, uh, and uh, incarcerate, or whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the Japanese in internment camps. And I, as, by that time, I, I began to be a little bit understanding and resentful myself of this attitude towards, towards uh, hardworking people who uh, wanted nothing more than just to be allowed to, to, to work hard. Were you shocked by Pearl Harbor? Were you surprised by that? Well, I didn't believe, I didn't believe that the Japanese were, were, would be powerful enough to undertake such a thing because um, Japan is a very small place with practically no resources. And we we're, were such a big country with every resource, and I couldn't believe that that the Japanese would really make war on, in the United States. And uh, uh, one of my, when I went to Japan later on, one of the men that I was quite interested in reading about was an admiral, Japanese admiral, by the name of Yamamoto, who said, he, frankly, he said this is a great mistake. We're, we're never going to win this war. He'd, he'd been an ambassador in, in Washington and he knew the power of, of, of America. And, uh, but uh, I, I, I never personally expected to see this happen or the day that Pearl Harbor occurred. I, um. Oh, tell me a little bit about what happened in California after Pearl Harbor. Well, um, there was, I, I was in uh, Alaska when Pearl Harbor occurred, and when I finally came down to, uh, uh, got, managed to get back to California, uh, I, uh, I was, uh, I knew that my, my life as a, as a photographer uh, was going to be very restricted because um, California, particularly, had a almost hysteria about the Japanese landing uh, as they did at, at Pearl Harbor, and so that uh, any photography uh, that could be considered of strategic objects was uh, forbidden here. And uh, I mean, if you even took a picture of a Golden Gate Bridge. As uh, people would say, would say, well, that 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 could be used for spying, and and so uh, I was kind of happy to to go into the service in the navy and be able to take uh, pictures that were uh, sort of constructive. My wife called. I was in the navy as lieutenant commander for four years, and my wife calls me the the photographer correspondent who 
never took pictures of blood or anything like that. I tried to do stories that were constructive about wh what uh, Americans were doing and could do, not the, not actually the the, the devastating part of war. I, I'm, perhaps it's a cop out on my part, but uh, I, I I felt. I could still do a job in a constructive way. Well, I think everybody felt very differently about that yeah. war. I want to just ask you um, if you have any uh, war. yeah, I know um, summary thoughts about how living through those years uh, changed you or changed your attitude. Maybe not something you were aware of at the time, but. You know, something that uh, you became aware of when you look back on those years and what they meant to you and how they... Okay. I want to just talk about what you think when you look back on those years, how it it uh, changed you or, or changed the country or what, what started maybe during those years. Well, uh, at, at 84, you have a lot of time to think about what we all did wrong, actually, and uh, um, it, uh, if if any if we learned anything from from uh, this last depression, uh, I hope that it will will be in some way conducive to uh, understanding of what we must do in the future, and uh, uh, I, I I feel that uh, for 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 one thing that. Television is is a very good thing to to make particularly young people realize what it was like and what it shouldn't be like in the future. So uh, uh, I, I I'm very grateful for having gone through these years and uh, learning something. I mean, unfortunately, nobody uh, can learn except by experience. I mean, textbooks and all that don't 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 help too much uh, sometimes uh, sometimes i think television is going to help people to do what, this what, what did you learn uh, during those years do you think well learn is a big big order uh, how i feel i i i feel that uh, we all should be aware of of what goes on around us rather than uh, just take it all for granted, because uh, I, I know, uh, as a young man, and those uh, I was rel relatively young in the, in the 30s, so that uh, I I, uh, I just took things for granted, and uh, uh, the, the, I found out that that things didn't work out uh, very happily for lots of people uh, just around me. I wasn't thinking about the outside world, but I mean here in my own. Uh, communities, or uh, th that is, in in California, where I felt it was my home and community, and should have been responsible for. Uh, I took everything for granted, and uh, I just uh, I hope that 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 doesn't uh, carry out carry on in into the 90s and the, and the next century, actually, where uh, people will will be. Uh, aware of what, what's happening. Yeah, you started to tell me you thought the 30s were the beginning of an awareness of, and I wasn't quite sure. I oh, well, uh, I, uh, the 30s were the beginning of, uh, and as far as I was concerned, of, of the fact that, uh, that uh, the Americans are not uh, exempt from problems at all, that we have to uh, Understand and accept, and and have find some sort of solution for them. I mean, this. I know this sounds very utopian or something. I don't mean that. I, but I just feel, uh, the 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 people that I met, for example, in, um, in the, in the that in the valley where the grapes of wrath were stored. In that particular case. Uh, the, the, we we were so unaware and so uncaring uh, that uh, of our own people. I mean, uh, I'm happy to see that in, today we're caring a little bit about the, what's happening in Somali land or the, uh, Somali Somalia, 
but uh, but uh, I I do hope that we also can be considerate of our own people and planning more for what the way we do it in the future. Okay, I'm you. sorry, that's not no, very no, good, no, no, not very well worded. That was very fine. Thank you. That's cut. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, that's very good.